you know, you, you need to, to develop billion dollar resource projects. It's always very important to be in the right jurisdiction. So Brazil, you know, the, the, the right of law, the, the right to contracts, contracts are respected and grandfathered. Meaning, if you have a, a contract to supply or, or a concession from the government and it, it lasts another 20 years, even if, it, if there's a change in law, your, your contract is going to be respected under the former law. So they're grandfathered for the period you signed it for, which is very important in, in terms of, of foreign investment. And even myself, as a Brazilian, you, you know that you can invest and uh, have, have the, the, the right of law that you own the assets. So that worry as an emerging market, you're saying that's not there for Brazil. Well, you have, among your portfolio of companies, you have oil and gas exploration, but you've yet to have actual production. You've found, what, 6.7 billion barrels of oil. When do you expect to bring that yeah. to market? We're going to start producing now in August, so it's very fast. And what's very important, 90% of our areas are in shallow waters of Brazil. Mm -hmm. They're not the pre-salt uh, Petrobras area. Our Ours is shallow waters, which mean very low lifting cost, $8 lifting cost, plus literally the same productivities per well as in the pre-salt areas. 40,000 barrels a day per well mm -hmm. is extremely high productivity, so, which means very low, lower capex. So, you know, w when you have $8 lifting costs, shallow waters, um, uh, And oil at $100 a barrel? Yes, it's a, it's a bonanza. Where These are bonanza assets. Where does oil have to be for you to be profitable? Uh, all in, uh, $22. Wow. Yes. So it's a very good year to be, <laughs> it's to be in this business for you. Shallow waters. Mm -hmm. Brazil, Brazil has a jurisdiction, and, and taxation in Brazil is also extremely civilized. What do you think of uh, President Rousseff's administration? Because clearly Brazil has celebrated in the global boom, but there are worries about Brazil perhaps overheating now. Your own finance minister has pointed a finger up towards the U.S. and said, you know, easy money flowing in, a little bit too hot here. That's a great problem to have if you have to use traditional monetary methods to cool your, your inflation. Our interest rate is, is at 11.75 with a and inflation is hovering around 5.5 percent. So you have a real interest rate there of, of an excess of 5 percent just to cool down the economy because Brazil has some bottlenecks. One of my companies, the bottlenecks, is, is trying to help Brazil the bottleneck through super ports. You know, we're building two, two large, gigantic Biggest port ports. in the Americas, right? Yes, biggest port in the Americas to basically help Brazil cope with this, um, um, you know, potentially inf inflation pressures. There are worries, though, about a credit bubble, credit risk there. I mean, do you think that the Rousseff administration is, is acting appropriately to try to rein in some of those worries? I think there was a little bit of overexpenditure from the part of the government, but one of the first measures of, of our uh, president was to, you know, cut the spending, government spending, by 50 billion reais. Initially, it was supposed to be 40. She, she stepped it up to 50. And if more is necessary, she will do, just to keep the discipline of the fiscal surplus, mm -hmm. which President Lula maintained so, so nicely over his eight years. Well, uh, President Obama is going to Brazil later this week. It's going to be the first foreign trip of the year. What kind of reception is he going to get? I think the, the you know, America, uh, sh uh, the last tw 20 years, I think uh, America's attention to Brazil was, was below, you know, below expectations. And, you know, even your, I, I heard from a former uh, American ambassador to Brazil, Mr. Sobo, who, who said to me, Ike, Brazil is not on America's map, mm -hmm. politically speaking. I, I think this realignment with, with America, with Obama and Juma, you know, in the areas of technology, in the areas of education, you know, I, 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 Columbia University is, is looking towards uh, eventually building uh, something in Brazil, you know, schools. You have uh, GE has announced a re research center. Uh, I understand Cisco and IBM is also looking to build research centers in Brazil. Just show that the appetite is, is increasing dramatically. And I think with the, with the blessing of a president coming, it, it simply, I think Americans like to see the government, you know, showing a little bit the way. I think you create a new wave of, of interest. The reason why we bought Ventana is that I see that the asset is three times bigger than uh, what the people who owned it thought it was. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend $100 million re-engineering the whole thing 
and showing everybody that it's three times larger. Well, then what about competition with yourself? I mean, do you feel that particularly in your, uh, in those particular assets, with gold and mines of that ilk, that you are set, or do you see further acquisitions? Oh, no, I, I definitely see, see more acquisitions because Colombia is very, very rich, and people, it's, it's being just, it's being rediscovered. Colombia was very rich, but, you know, with, in, in the regions where active, the FARC was very active, right. the, the guerrillas. So for 30 years, these areas have been kept um, untouched, if you want, which was, so thank you. <laughs> Is Colombia the market you're most excited about outside of Brazil? Yes. I, I, I only invest in three countries in South America, Brazil, Colombia, and Chile. These are, you know, because of these, these set of rules, you know, great jurisdiction, uh, uh, decent taxation, you know, uh, uh, skilled people, uh, uh, legal framework that you can you can work, you know, very well. With OGX, your oil and gas exploration business, you talked about bringing oil to production in August. For those fields in Colombia, you said 2012. Yeah, end of 2012. Yes. You're still on. It's that onshore, schedule? yeah, because it's onshore, right? Much mm -hmm. easier. Onshore oil is. is so much easier to and so much faster to develop. There's a lot of excitement about Colombia lately. Carlos Slim just bought into an uh, oil company there, Tabasco. No, well. he's following me, huh? Mm. Is he following yeah, you? It looks like, yeah. A little bit yeah, of rivalry yeah, there, perhaps? Absolutely. It's nice competition, healthy competition. <laughs> well, do you view it that way? He's, what, uh, number one on the world's rich you list. You've already said you want that spot. Yes, uh, by 215, yeah. I, 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 by 215? Yeah, I, I'm telling him that he should clean up his his right uh, rear, uh, mirror and his left and, and uh, on the top because I, I don't know I'm going to pass through one of these sides. <laughs> well, any chance that perhaps that timeline gets a little shorter with yes, the commodity yes, boom we're yes, seeing? Yes, yes, yes. There is because see, in, in our five companies, we have an embedded growth story of 10 years. And so it's, it's just let, let, let the time go by. And obviously, if, if commodity prices go higher, mm -hmm. Mr. Slim is going to be, yes. Number two, three, I don't know. <laughs> well, he's got, he's got a few years. Where would you put your net worth in the next few years? By 2015, where will you be? You're about $30 billion, is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. By 2015? Mm. 80? 80? Yes. Not bad to have goals like this. No. Tell, tell me, though, about your plans, more seriously, for your companies. Do you intend to, as part of that, bring more companies to the public markets in the year ahead? Yes, we have five listed public companies. We're preparing two to go public in a year from now, roughly. Mm -hmm. It's the, the coal mine in Colombia and the gold mine in Colombia. And we intend to list them in London, Bogota, and Sao Paulo at the, at the same time because the markets are very nice in Colombia and, and London is the mecca for, for really for resources. And the rockiness that we've seen to the markets uh, that hasn't moved that timeline out, you're still thinking no, to that? No, it's, it's quality assets can always go public, you know, and th th our, our assets uh, have the classification of world-class assets, meaning very big, low cost, you know, always in the first quartile in terms of cost mm -hmm. and very high quality of product. For instance, well, gold is gold, it's not the question of, of quality, but coal, Colombian coal is what they call compliance coal, very high calorific value per ton, plus very very low contaminants. What's your outlook for oil? Oof, I, I happen to believe in in, uh, in peak oil, meaning, you know, if we in Brazil have to find oil in 2,000 meters of not me, I'm in shallow waters, but Petrobras is undertaking a going to the moon. Operation. Imagine 2,000 meter of water level, then another 5 meters, 5,000 meters down, across the salt layer that is up to 2,000 meters. Uh, you know, if, if mankind has to do this to to, to bring this oil and and in, in, into the to us to, to us consumers, uh, you can see that there's short the shortages are for real. You think we're running out of oil? We are. We definitely are.